I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. Thanks for joining us again at the Azure Academy. Today, we're covering networking, specifically all of the DNS options that are in Azure. So if you haven't done so already, please do click on our subscribe button and join us here at the Azure Academy community and leave us some comments below on questions that you have or something that you'd like us to cover on a future video. So there's many different options when it comes to how you handle DNS when it comes to the cloud. And let's go over to our docs and take a look at some of this. So inside our docs, we'll go to products and then scroll down a little to networking. And then we've got several options here to talk about. DNS can be private. DNS can be public or it could be kind of a hybrid of both. Let's first take a look at the Azure DNS docs. So let's go over to the overview here and we'll look quickly at what is Azure DNS. Now, this is where we resolve public DNS, and that would be something like your websites that are maybe registered with Network Solutions or GoDaddy, or you've got uh, pointer records that you've got to have going somewhere to a public website or TXT records that you're using to prove that you own a particular domain. Those things would be handled in the Azure public DNS. Private DNS does not do internet-based resolution at all. The benefits around private DNS are in doing some easier scale and management around what's going on inside your Azure virtual network. So your networks can be linked directly to Azure private DNS, and we'll cover some of that here. And those features are all under our capabilities, how you can do forwarding and reverse lookup. You can do nested namespaces. So you could do something, for example, like domain.com, or you could do demo.domain.com or test.demo.domain.com. But these are, again, tied to your private network, so you can't do public resolution through these. All right, so let's go over to the Azure portal here, and you might recognize this from our recent video on exporting ARM templates from the Azure portal, and we'll put a link to the YouTube card up here so you can go check that out if you missed that. But basically what we want to look at here is just the networking components. If I was to try to sort things here and sort them by type, that would certainly help and I could move this out of the way so I can get a little more screen real estate, but I still can't really see everything the way I want. So if you haven't used them yet, you should start looking at filters. So let's go to add a filter here. We're gonna add one for type, and then in our dropdown box that shows up, we're gonna uncheck select all and just select our networking related components. So by selecting just those, we can only now look at those particular networking related resources. So you could use this as another way to filter if you don't have something in the, the name convention that you can filter with. So first one we're gonna jump into is the DNS zone, and this is the public DNS zone. So you can see at the top here, we have four name servers. And then this main section has to do with our record set. So when you deploy this, you get a name server and a start of authority record. And then from there on, it's all up to you to put in the records that you want. So you can see I've already got a record here and let's show you how to add a record set. So we'll give it a name. And then you can see our dot DNS zone name here, which corresponds to the name of the zone itself. Then we have our record type, which we have the A, the quadruple A, IPv4 and IPv6, C names, MX for your email, name server, service records, text records, and pointer records. Now we have this other feature in here, which is the record set alias. And when we turn this on, that gives us the option of pointing at other record sets and I don't have any at the moment, or Azure Resources. So in this case, I'll use the Azure Resource. I've got my particular subscription selected, and then from the dropdown, I can see all of the related resources that are in my subscription that I could put in here. So I could use my traffic manager record. I could use my public IP addresses, or my CDN or front door service. So I'll pick on my particular VM since that's the record that I'm creating. And then I just decide on whatever time to live I want. And this could be hours, minutes, or seconds. Let's make this one uh, just one minute and we'll hit okay. And then there we go, it has refreshed and now we've got a new record. So let's add another record set here and we'll call this one traffic. And this time we'll set up a C name and we'll use that record set again to our traffic manager. And this time we'll set this one for one second. We'll hit okay. And now we've got a C name record. Now, because this is a Azure resource, we also have access control. 
So we can specify all of our RBAC permissions and there are a set of RBAC controls just for Azure DNS. We can set those up here if we need to. Also, we have the option of adding tags. So I could add a tag in for my cost code so I know who's being charged for this particular resource, as well as we have a diagnose and solve problems. And this is something that's been showing up in our Azure resources now. And for uh, any one of these issues that you're having, you can click on that button and it will either give you a script or it may give you some steps to follow like it does in this case, or at the bottom, my issue is not listed, which will give you a link out to Azure support as well as the forums so that you could try to diagnose and self-serve your particular issue. And then we have the properties link where we see the resource ID for this zone, locks where we can secure this resource from deletes or from changes. We have our export templates where we can look at the DNS resource as well as all of the particular records that we have created where we can export this uh, and reuse it again somewhere else. And uh, a recent update too that uh, all of these parameters may be confusing you and you just just want to look at exactly what everything is right at this exact moment then you can uncheck this include parameters button and now everything is exactly as it is so you could use this in terms of uh, building something capturing it as a template destroying what you built and then redeploying the template to validate that everything works exactly that you wanted it to. And then we have all of our standard monitoring and alerting that can be done. And then we can add new alert rules, which of course means we have to build a criteria around our alerts. And you can see our Azure governance videos on monitoring if you haven't seen those, and those will be linked in the card. And then we also have some metrics. And so let me pull up uh, our metric count here. This is what's currently going on in the zone right now. So we can look at our our volume or uh, this zone was just created so there probably won't be much here you can see that uh, the changes that I made uh, just uh, did some record counts have gone up from two to four and then of course you could download these metrics and share them with others through Excel or copy a link or pin them out to your dashboards so let's switch gears now and go from talking about the public DNS to the private DNS zone so in order to understand private DNS zones we have to understand Azure virtual networks. So in our documentation, looking at the networking section, we'll open up virtual networks. And then over here in the filter, we'll type DNS and we'll click on this first link to use dynamic DNS with your own DNS server. There are two ways of dealing with DNS inside your virtual network. And the first one is the default. That is Azure provided DNS. You may be thinking, well, haven't we already talked about Azure DNS this whole time? Well, yes but this is a different DNS than what we just looked at. This is Azure DNS inside the virtual network itself. This particular article refers to how to do DNS when you do not have your own DNS server. So even though there are DNS settings that we can set and you can go through the Windows and Linux commands here and that's going to set the DNS suffix on the VMs, but there are more layers to it than just this. Looking at the Azure your portal let's pull up one of our virtual networks and we'll start off here with our hub and in here we'll go to DNS servers in the blade and when we do we see that we have that default set here and that is the Azure provided DNS so what is this referring to inside Azure we have a DHCP server and you can see the IP config settings here from the two VMs that I have. And the DHCP server in this case is 168.63.129.16. And it's that way for both of these systems. And basically you'll find a number in that range in every Azure VM. That is because when we issue IP addresses, even though we are using your virtual network address space, we control them through our own DHCP scope. So the other components that are here that are relevant to our discussion is the connection specific DNS suffix, which in this server is reddog.microsoft.com. But on this server is this really long ID.internal.cloudup.net. 
Why are those here? Well, first of all, there's nothing wrong, and these are here by default whenever you spin up an Azure VM, and that's going to be dependent also on the region in which you spin up those VMs. Those suffixes are there so that we can have a fully qualified domain name for any VM that is in Azure, okay, which is a requirement for it just to run in our platform. And Red Dog, by the way, was the original code name for Azure. And we can override this and change this. And that's what our doc was referring to. So we can set our own DNS suffix, even though we don't have our own DNS server. Okay, and I have a script uh, that I'll show you in a second that'll do this. But what is the benefit of this? Well, the benefit as it relates to our talk today is that we can set our private DNS that we have in Azure to be that DNS suffix. Inside the Azure private DNS, you see that it looks a little bit different than public. First of all, there are no name servers, and that's because we're using Azure provided DNS using this DNS suffix to track all of our DNS entries. Azure is the name server, but the namespace is, in this case, axatest.com. And this is a private name. It's not uh, something that I own publicly, but it's just something that I'm testing with here. And then we link this private zone to our virtual networks. So I've got my hub and my spoke linked here. And then based on the networks that are linked to this particular DNS zone, they can do DNS resolution now for those fully qualified names inside this private zone. So every one of these IP addresses and names I can resolve. So we'll do an NS lookup on vm4.axatest.com and we can see that that resolves to 10.3.0.7. So what happened is that request went to Azure DNS. Azure had no idea what to do with it, but then it noticed that we had a virtual network link to our private DNS zone that did know what to do with it and that responded. Now, in order to make this work, we need to have the default Azure provided DNS as the DNS server on our machines. So over on the other side, you can see that we have a different DNS server. So how did this get here? Well, looking back at Azure, that particular VM was inside our spoke network and the DNS server here says to use a custom DNS and that's using 10.2.0.4. So when we try to do DNS resolution to VM4 from over here, then we're going to see that this fails. And the reason why is because our DNS server doesn't know anything about it. Even though the virtual network is linked, we can't resolve because we're not looking at the right name server like we were on our other VM. As long as we change this to support the Azure provided DNS, then we can do name resolution across both environments. So I'll reset this. So now that that's set up to use the Azure default, now we have to get our VMs to use those new settings. Now, this normally does take a reboot, and it is the best practice to give the VM a reboot. However, we can also run a command, and the command get DNS client server address will show us which DNS we're using. And then we have a interface alias and an interface index. And then we can run this command to set that DNS to look at another DNS server. But I can run that command and then run the get again. And then now we're using the Azure provided DNS. So now if I do that NS lookup, then we do get name resolution appropriately because we are linked to the private zone. And I can also resolve to AA-VM1, even though that's sitting in the other network that I'm not peered with. So all that works just based on linking them between the private zone. Now that we've got the DNS server set correctly inside the VM, now we come back to the DNS suffixes. Now we can run a command inside the VMs in order to set our DNS suffix so that we are resolving to the same uh, suffix as our zone, which in my case is axatest.com. But I wanted to show you how to do that in two different ways. So I've got a script here that I've written, which is uh, nothing special. It's just out of the box Windows PowerShell scripting. And I'm putting in some variables here for my domain name that I want. And then getting my network card where the interface alias matches the word Ethernet and then I'm going to set the DNS client for that specific suffix to be that domain and then I'm going to make some variables out of some of those things so that I can write it all on the screen as an output. So if we take this code and just run it right inside our VM then it's done in a second and then if we do the ipconfig all again 
Now we see our connection specific suffix has been changed to axatest.com. Keep in mind again that this is setting dynamic DNS for your DNS suffix through a script when you do not have VMs joined to your domain or do not have your own separate DNS server. If you have those, then your suffix will change automatically as part of joining your domain. Inside system properties, if you go to change and then click on more, then you have your primary DNS suffix and that's what will be set when you join a domain. Now, separately from that, the one that we changed was the connection specific suffix because we don't have a domain here. And we don't have a DNS appliance. So we can go into the TCP settings, go to properties, go to the advanced and then DNS at the top and we can see the connection for this DNS suffix, and that's where we change it with our script. So that was the one way to change it. The other way that I wanted to show you how to change it is in Azure. We're now inside the VM itself, and if we go down in the blade here, there is the operations section. And in here is run command. Now, if you have never used run commands before, uh, they could really almost use their own video. And there is a lot of interesting stuff here. So give me some comments below if you're interested in seeing this or exploring some more of what's going on inside the VM blade. But we can click here to run a PowerShell script. And then I can paste in my code. When we click run here, that's going to execute a command through the Azure cloud service to the VM. It's going to then set that on the VM itself. Okay, and there's my output DNS suffix set to axatest.com on Nick ethernet index number six. So if we go back to the VM real quick, and then we run our IP config all command again, we can see now that axatest.com is set. All right, so you can run those kind of PowerShell commands inside the VM or just use the Azure portal to run things like that. So I hope that you've enjoyed looking at the multitude of DNS options that are in Azure, everything from custom bring your own DNS solutions, how to deal with your public DNS, private DNS, and then the different options and features that we have in Azure. So if you thought that this video was good, then hit that thumbs up. And if not, well, then you know what to do. And while you're down there, click on that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Not only does that help you to join the Azure Academy community, but it also lets the YouTube algorithm know that you're interested in our content and it promotes it to other people as well. And while you're down there, go ahead and click that notification bell so you can receive an email when our videos come out, which is roughly once a week. And we will see you in the next video. Happy learning.